The Bnei Yisrael come back from war with the Midianim. Moshe Rabbeinu says to the Bnei Yisrael that you had left all the women alive. These were the people that had caused the Yidden to rebel against Hashem, Bidvar Bilam, based on the words of Bilam. Rashi quotes the words Bidvar Bilam and explains that Bilam had said to, the, had said to them, that even if you're going to gather all the multitudes of armies in the world, you're never going to be able to overcome the Yidden. Because do you think you're more than the Egyptians who had 600 chosen chariots? Let me give you advice, says Bilam. The God of the Jews despises immorality and he gives them the advice to go and try to entice the Jewish men, etc. Rashi concludes, as it says in Chelek, this refers to the Patriarch Chelek and Sanhedrin, as well as in the Sifri. So the Rebbe has a number of questions over here on this Rashi. Number one, why is it so relevant? All of these details that Bilam says, if you gather all the multitudes, etc., etc., why is that relevant in our Pasuk? And furthermore, the Rebbe says, really the same idea was brought already earlier in Pasha's Bolok, on the words L'choi Otzcha, where Bilam says, let me give you some advice. Rashi brought this general idea already that he gave the advice of getting the Yidden, to, trying to get the Yidden to sin. But Rashi over there does not bring all of these details. So if it's important, why doesn't Rashi bring it over there? Some other things that Rebbe says we need to understand is, Bilam says, even if you're going to bring all the armies of the world, you're not going to be able to overcome the Yidden because are you more than the Egyptians? Well, what kind of logic is that? Of course, all the armies are more than the Egyptians. Egypt is one nation and all the armies are many, many more than that. So what's Bilam even saying? Another thing that Rebbe asks is, you're trying to prove the greatness and the might of Egypt, and you say they have 600 chosen chariots. 600, they had much more than 600. There's 600 of the chariots. There's many other officers and riders and chariots, etc., etc., which is clearly what caused the Yidden to be so frightened. So why is Rashi only limiting it and speaking only and saying that Bilam only spoke about the 600 chariots? So that's another thing that Rebbe says we need to understand. The Rebbe says, oh, so what's this expression? Bo, you come and let me give you some advice. And the Rebbe also wants to know about what it is specifically in the Perik Chelek and in the Safri that we need to still know in order to help us understand what Rashi is telling us. What, what is it that Rashi is hinting to in these, um, in these in Gemara and the Safri? So the Rebbe says what's going on is as follows. In Parsha's Bullock, it said, L'choi otzcha, let me give you advice. So over there, Rashi just simply said, the advice is that Hashem doesn't like immorality. In our Parsha, there's something more going on. It says, Bidvar Bilam. There was some other words, some other things that Bilam said in connection to this advice. And this is what Rashi is explaining. What are these other words that Bilam said? Bilam said that even if you're going to bring all the armies of the world, you're not going to be able to overcome the Yidden. And therefore, he's giving the advice that Hashem doesn't like the union of znus, immorality, etc. In other words, why is this all relevant to me? And why is it being said specifically in our parsha? Because Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing to the Eden, why did you let these women live? You're fighting a war against Midian. Do you realize that these women, they are part of the, the war effort? This is exactly what Bilam had told the Mayavim and the Midianim. This is what he said to them, that there's no other way how you're going to be able to overcome the Yidden. Even if you bring about all the armies in the world, there's no way you're going to be able to overcome the Yidden. And therefore, let me give you this advice. Get these women to entice the Yidden to be able to sin. And let's now see what Rashi says and why all these details are important. The first thing Bilam says to them is, even if you're going to bring all of the armies in the world, you're not going to be able to overcome the Yidden. Bilam doesn't need any proof of this. This is obvious why that is. The Yidden had just overcome amazing wars against people like Sichon and Oig, who were the strongest people around, who ever, no one was able to conquer them. They were the ones hired by all the Goyim to be able to protect them, and Yidden just overcome them in the most miraculous ways. So that's a given, that through physical might, you're for sure not overcoming them. However, they had another idea. And this is the next part of Rashi, and this is where the 600 chariots come in. Bullock and Midian understood through physical war, we're not going to win them. What about spiritual war? Well, they tried Bilam already to curse them, and that didn't work. But now they're thinking, maybe there are people that are going to be greater than Bilam. People that have a certain spiritual powers. And with these 
spiritual powers they'll be able to overcome the Yidden. The 600 chariots of the Egyptians, Rashi had told us earlier already, where did these 600 chariots come from? These were from the people that feared Hashem, and that's why their animals didn't die in the Makos. So these are people of a much greater spiritual caliber. And yet... They were not able to overcome the Yidden. So this is what Bilam is saying. Do you think you're going to be more than the 600 chariots? Meaning not physical might over 600 people. We're speaking about, are you going to have more spiritual power than these 600 people? Certainly you're not going to find anywhere else more spiritual power. So this is what Bilam says to them. Come, let me give you an idea. Let me give you some advice. And he says, come closer to me. Boyu, come close. Let me give you some secret advice. We'll soon see why it had to be in a secret way. And what he tells them is that Hashem despises immorality. What was Bilam saying? And why was it in a way of secret advice? So first, the Rebbe says as follows. The Ben Chamish Lemikra could come along and ask, we, find, we don't find throughout the 40 years that the Eden should ever be involved in such terrible sins. In fact, in the one story that we find with one woman that acted in an inappropriate way, Shloim is Bazdivri, Rashi tells us over there that this was the praise of the Eden, that this was only one incident throughout all this time. Says the Rebbe, this is now what Rashi was referring to when Bilam has to say, come, let me tell you a secret, come close to me and I'll tell you quietly. And this is also what he's referring to, sending us off to the Gemara in Perek Chelek, because that's where we have the whole story of how the Eden were tricked into doing these Averis, where the Gemara discusses at great length how Bilam had advised the, these nations to set up tents with selling silk. And they had these women, elderly women, standing on the outside of the tents, convincing the Eden to come inside as the Eden was strolling throughout the marketplaces. And they told them to come to buy these materials. And then they said there's even better merchandise and cheaper prices inside. And then there was these women inside enticing the Eden with wine, etc., etc. So we understand that Bilam, first of all, had to do it in a secretive way so that the Eden shouldn't know about it because clearly they would then be careful from all of these tactics. We could also now understand how it is that the Eden fell through with these Averos. It was because of these hidden tactics that Bilam had set up to entice and to trick the Eden. However, the question still becomes, and this is why we're now going to need to Safri as well, why are the Yidden, how does it even make sense that the Yidden are just strolling and enjoying themselves in these marketplaces so they could end up falling through with these Averos and entering these tents, etc. For this, Rashi tells us to look in the Safri as well, which the Safri tells us that at the end of the wars with Sicha and Anoi, the Yidden had so much of the spoils already that they were... It was excessive to the extent where they were tearing up and ripping up all of the spoils. All they were interested in just pure silver and gold. In other words, they were holding at a situation as the Torah describes elsewhere, Vayishman Vayishurun Vayivat, when you didn't have too much all of, of all of this Gashmias, Rahman al Itzlan, it could cause them this ex- extra sin. And therefore, we now have the whole flow of what Rashi is telling us is that, number one, what Bilam's idea exactly was, and how this was part of the war effort, this was part of the way the Minyanim were trying to fight the Yidden through these women, and that's why Moshe Rabbein is upset that the Yidden were, these women were left alive, but Rashi is also explaining to us, both through the Gemara and the Safri, how it ended up that the Yidden could fall so low. The Rebbe finishes off with Yei Neshol Torah. We find that in Melchemist Midian, we find two expressions. Hashem says, Nekoim, Nikmas Bnei Yisroel, take the revenge for Bnei Yisroel from the Midyanim. When Moshe Rabbeinu gives over this command, he says, take the revenge of Hashem against Midyan. The Rebbe's father explains that Hashem is concerned with the honor of the Yidden, so he says, take the revenge of the Yidden. Moshe Rabbeinu is concerned with the honor of Hashem, so he says, take the revenge on behalf of Hashem. But the Rebbe explains, why is it specifically over here that we find this idea this sort of two ways of looking at it, says the Rebbe, based on this Rashi, we can now understand it. Because there's two things going on over here. Midian is trying to fight the Yidden, and there's two things going on. On the one hand, they want to destroy the Yidden, and that's why there's the concept of the revenge on behalf of the Yidden. On the other hand, how are they doing it? They're fighting Hashem, because Hashem hates the immorality, and that's why it's the revenge of Hashem. And this is why Hashem... Out of these two things, which one does he choose? There's two things going on, but he chooses the fact that it's revenge on behalf of the Yidden, and Moshe Rabbeinu, who cares about the honor of Hashem, says, is the revenge on behalf of Hashem. 
And now we can also understand something else. Rashi tells us on the words Nikmas Hashem that someone that stands up against the Yidin stands up against Hashem. But again, why is it emphasized over here specifically? Because it's specifically in these stories, in this story, where we find these two ideas that the Midyanim are trying to fight the Yidin, but all of this is coming in a way where they recognize that Chas V'Shalom by the Yidin going against Hashem, this is the way they're going to be able to fight the Yidin. And that's why there's both of these ideas, Nikmas Hashem, as well as Nikmas Bnei Yisrael.